and the very first time I caught a real bass, you know, I caught a few like 10 inchers and they were, they're not real bass. And then I hooked one that was about three, probably three and a half pounds. I thought it was the biggest bass that's ever been, that's ever been put on a hook. And that thing jumped and it pulled and dragged. I'd, I'd never had a fish pull drag before. And I thought that was so amazing. I just wanted to catch more and more big bass just like that. That's all I wanted to do from that point forward. An unbelievable 27 Bassmaster Top 10, a 12-time Bassmaster Classic That's... Qualifier, an Elite Series <laughs> Champion from Salem, Virginia, the Cruise Missile, John Cruise. With 75 pounds, 4 ounces, John Cruise is a two-time Bassmaster Elite Series Champion. Cruise controls the St. John's River and becomes a two-time Bassmaster Elite Series Champion. I'm John Cruise from Salem, Virginia, and I've been fishing professionally for over 24 years. You know, my dad had um, a lot of influence in my life. We're, we're very close, even to, you know, today. So when, when I was you know, about halfway through college, I kind of put together my plan of how, how is this going to work? How am I going to make uh, really a living at, at bass fishing? And I'll never forget, uh, I told my dad, I said, I got something I want to talk with you about and I want to explain, you know, try to get your support for. He said, okay, sure. So I sat down and he and I talked and I talked straight for 45 minutes on exactly what it was gonna look like to be a professional bass angler, how I was gonna be able to make a living. And when we came, you know, came together at the end of that whole conversation, I shouldn't say conversation, it was basically me talking the whole time. My dad looked at me and he goes, wow, you've done a lot of research on how to make this a career. He said, uh, he said I'm all in. You know, he, he was an attorney and at the time, he was really getting fed up with a lot of the negative things that, that come along with, uh, you know, owning a business and, and being, a, being an attorney. And he said, you know what, if this is where your passion is, this is what you need to do. And he, he supported me 100%. So when I was basically from then on planning how to be a professional bass angler, what I was going to do to prepare myself, how I was going to make myself better and, and how I was going to make it all happen, uh, I never, I never to put one second of thought into a different career. And so many people, you know, as I was you know, going out there and trying to become a professional bass angler, they would always say, oh, well, okay, well, if, if this doesn't work out, then what are you gonna do? And I would, I, my answer was, was the same. I'd say, I don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's exactly what I, I it was so funny because so many people's faces just got so funny they didn't understand what I was doing. Like, no, no, but what if it doesn't work out? I'm like, no, you don't understand. It, it, that's not an option. Failure was not an option for me. And so, you know, to, in, in, in other words, you know, going boldly, just not even looking back, you know, failure was not an option. Didn't, didn't even think about it. There he is. Yep, that'll work. Get in here. Yes. Now we're talking, baby. On my third Bassmaster tournament, I came in third down at Lake Okeechobee. Throwing, the lake was low, throwing a shallow crankbait, doing something that I grew up doing around Virginia and North Carolina. That's right. Today's the uh, this last day. I just I just want to go out and catch five fish. And if they weigh if they weigh 18 pounds, that'd be that'd be wonderful. If they weigh Seven pounds, I'd be happy as long as I can get five fish and uh, just complete a limit. I'll be uh, I'll be a happy camper. Fish on. Not big. It's, it's on there. Stay on there, buddy. Stay on. Stay on. Just tire yourself out. Come on. Tire yourself out. Working. Let that rod whip in. Oh man, he's strong. Some kind of strong. Coming up, coming up, get it, get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you go, John. Yes, sir. That's, a, that's what I needed right there. Just what I needed right there. I am happy, happy now. Whew. So I was very comfortable doing that. 
I found a little group of fish, caught some big ones each day, ended up finishing third in that tournament. I won a uh, Ranger boat is what I won for, for finishing third. You've, you know, back then they gave uh, first, second, and third place were all boats. And I sold that boat uh, through a friend uh, the next day. And that money from that boat really gave me the chunk of money I needed to, to kind of go as a career and, and have some, some legs to, to it. Mercury is the longest standing partner I've had throughout my career. Yeah, when I, when I fire up that Mercury Four Stroke Pro XS, it's just a sound to me of reliability because I've been in it so many hours, you know, at least 200 hours a year I'm putting on those engines. And that's not even a ton for the guys that are, you know, guides and uh, commercial fishermen, things like that. But I know that sound is going to be behind me every step of the way, going out, coming back. I just, I just trust it. I know that that's a sound that sounds awesome but it also is a sound of reliability when I hear it. I was in the top 12. All I needed was like a top 40 to make the classic that year. I called my dad that night and I said, I said, guess what? He said, what? I said, I made the classic. He said, really? I said, I, said, I don't even need to catch a fish tomorrow. And I, I made the classic, it's done. And he was like, well, how do you feel? I said, I feel weird. He said, why? I said, I feel weird because I kind of have some relief because I know that I made the Bassmaster Classic and, and it, I know it's going to, it's big because it's going to be two and it's going to become the Elite Series and all this stuff. I said, but now I feel like I should make it every year. I said, I did it once and now I know I can do it again. And so I like, I already feel pressure for the next year. And he was, he, he didn't, he didn't know what to say. Like he was back. He said, you just need to enjoy the moment. You know, he's trying to be a great dad. And I just never, I'll never forget that feeling that I had. And I, I, I still use that today with my kids. You know, when my kids bring home a report card of all A's, I'm like, well, you've done it now. And they're like, what? I said, well, you've shown that you can do it. Now you're gonna have to, now you're expected to do this every time. rallies to the top of the leaderboard with 72 pounds and six ounces of largemouth bass out of the California Delta. You know, when the first, the first win that I had in California in, in 2010, there were a lot of family, friends, sponsors, uh, business associates, those type of people that, you know, called, left messages, uh, sent text messages, th that kind of thing. And it was it was an amazing experience. I did a ton of interviews afterwards, most of them on the phone. But then in in 22 with the win, it was interesting because I've been in the you know, fishing industry a lot longer, I have a lot more connections with people around the fishing world um, from my associations with the ASA, uh, with, with missile baits, with other, you know, people and, and relationships that I have, there, there was people from all over that, that congratulated me and it was an extremely humbling uh, experience. I mean, when people that you consider your idol growing up or, you know, and as you're starting your career that are the ones that are congratulating you, uh, you know, Rick Clun making a post saying, I loved watching my friend John Cruz win on the St. John, like, that still blows me away to this day. Kevin Van Dam taking the time to send me a paragraph text about how happy he was for me. And it was great to see my dad up there on the stage. And just just that kind of congratulations from people that, that I still look up to was just super memorable and just very humbling at the same time. It's the old Carolina rig. Did the trick. Old school. Some things never get outdated. 